Hey guys, it's Stephen Gates here from MyPLCTraining.com with another video to help you get confident with PLCs and become a confident automation professional. Uh, this video is going to be all about Function Block Diagram or FBD. And before we get into the video, I want to let you know that we have created a free resource you can download in exchange for your email address if you want to learn even more about function block diagram. So check it out in the description below and let's get into this video. Okay, let's look at a couple simple examples of function block logic. So I am here in Studio 5000, which is what we're going to be looking at, function block diagram in Studio 5000 specifically. So you can see I've got several instructions here. We're just going to go through some of these and we're going to start just with a couple very simple examples. So first let's look at some math calculations and this is where I think function block diagram is really good and really useful because one of the things you can do is you can string together your instructions in a sequential fashion and you can see the way the value, the process value changes at each step through the calculations. So we've just got two connected here together we've got a divide instruction and we've got a multiply instruction so I'm gonna take this online so we can see this running and try not to get too distracted with the rest of the stuff we're just focusing on the divide and multiply for now so I've got an emulator controller running here and see here. So you can see the emulator controller is running there in slot 0. And we're going to take this guy and download. Okay, so the download is completed, so we're going to go to run mode. And I'm going to ignore that. We'll go to run mode, change controller to run mode, or remote run, yes. So when these green bars are shown, or when these, um, the row number and the column letter are green, then you know it's running. So Right here we have, coming into our divide instruction, we have um, tank 3 level is connected to source A, and the number 10,000 is connected to source B. So tank 3 level would likely be connected to an analog input. If we were running this on a real system, it would be reading the level of a tank that was connected to an analog input, say a 4 to 20 milliamp input module. And we are pretending for this example that the level comes in in terms of gallons. So it's a 10,000 gallon tank that we're measuring. And so this, this level is already scaled, which could be scaled with your analog input module uh, with a control logic system. And it's coming in in gallons. Now you could scale it to percentage like we're going to do here in a minute with the analog input module but maybe you don't want to do that maybe you want to have it in gallons and percentage for some reason so uh, what we've got is tank 3 level is going into source A of this divide instruction and the number 10,000 is going into source B so what happens with the divide instruction if you're not familiar with this it just takes source A divides it by whatever is in source B so in this case um, looks like tank 3 level is so 17 divided by 10,000 is going to be put into the destination 
uh, which is 0 0.0017. So we don't even have to put a tag here, which is another nice thing about function block diagram. You can just connect it to another source, or you don't even have to connect it. You can just see what the output is going to be. So in this case, we're taking uh, 0 0.0017, connecting it to source A, or the destination of the divide, connecting it to the source A of the multiply. And then in the source B of the multiply, we've got the number 100. So we're dividing whatever's in source A divided by 100. Uh, we're not dividing, I'm sorry, we're multiplying by 100 to give us a percentage. So let's pull up the watch window here, cover up some of this, and I'm going to just do a quick watch so we can look at only the tags we care about right now. Tank 3 level and tank 3 percentage or level percentage. So take this 17 and we'll just make this a thousand because that's easily uh, calculated. So we've got a thousand divided by 10,000 is going to be 10%, right? So a thousand divided by a thousand or 10,000 gives us 0 0.1. 0 0.1 in here times 100 gives us 10. So 10%. So let's try 5,000. That should give us 50%, 5,000 out of 10,000 is 50%. So 5,000 divided by 10,000 gives us 0.5. And then uh, 0.5 times 100 gives us 50. So that is a quick example. Now, just to show you how this is set up, if you were to set this up from scratch, I'm going to edit, make some online edits here. You would need an input reference. So that's what these are. So you'd need two input references for your first instruction and one input reference for your second if we're going to mimic this exact calculation. And then we'll need, this is in favorites, but you can also find it in the compute and math tab. We've got a multiply and a divide. So I'm going to drag that over here. Things are running a little bit slow today. I'm just going to go offline because it doesn't seem to want to cooperate. Okay, maybe I was trying to drag it too high. Again, you would just connect one of your input references to source B, one of your input references to source A, and then your output of the divide instruction can just connect to source A. So you just click and drag it. And then when it turns green, you drop it. And then again, with your input reference, you click here and drag it. When it turns green, we drop it. And then the destination, we don't have to put an output tag, which is nice. But if you want to um, have an actual tag associated with this calculation, then you gr drag this, drop it there. Okay, so that's basically how it works. And then you just add your tags, um, which I'll show you real quick. Just add tags just like you would with ladder logic instructions. You can browse for them or just type them in there. And then you can just enter your constant numbers there as well. All right, so that is our introduction example. Whoops, I don't want to get rid of the other ones here, just these guys. Um, so we're going to look at one more example now, and this is using Boolean logic. So this is, depending on how you, how you look at it, I think it's a little bit worse, not as user friendly to do Boolean logic in function block diagram versus ladder logic. If you're familiar with gate logic or using logic gates, for Boolean logic, then it is actually pretty intuitive. But I think ladder logic is still more intuitive for simple Boolean logic, personally. So let's just look at this example here. So we've got a Boolean or, a Boolean not, a Boolean and. So the way this works is you can, you've got four inputs for your or, you can connect up to four 
inputs and if any one of them is true then the output is going to be true or one if HMI start push button is true or if motor start relay is true then it's going to output a one here okay and then with our boolean not that's pretty simple you just have one input and it's going to flip it from a zero to a one or, or a one to a zero and then the output of the boolean not and the boolean or go to a boolean and and from there you and them together which means they both must be true for the output of the boolean and to be true or else it's going to be false so if one of them's false the output's going to be false so this is mimicking a basic um, motor start latch in circuit or a make seal break circuit as i like to call it sometimes it's just a seal in logic so let's run it and we'll just show you how it works here download Okay, so that download completed. So now we are going to send our or finalize all edits in this program because I started some edits earlier. Okay, and then when we get the green bars, we know we're good. We'll pull up our watch window. And I'm going to get rid of these guys and just add our HMI start PB and our HMI stop. PB so we can uh, manipulate those values so what we expect to happen is that when we push the start button um, it's going to latch in the start relay and then once the start relay is on it's going to latch this in and and stay on even when the start push button is released so let's try it out here so we'll turn this guy to a one which makes HMI start PB1 makes the output 1, makes this a 1, which then makes this a 1. So then when we release the push button, it'll go back to 0. So now HMI start PB is 0, motor start relay is 1, still produces an output of 1, and a 1 on the motor start relay. Um, the HMI stop PB is a zero right now, so the stop push button is not pressed on the HMI, which is giving us a one here and allowing this to be true, because this must be a one. So now if we make HMI start PB1 or we press it momentarily, that should unlatch the circuit. So we'll make this a one. You can see this is one, this is now zero, which would make this, even if this was still one, it would make this output false, which is going to unlatch this. And then when we release the stop push button, it should remain off. So this goes back to one after we release the push button, because this is zero now. But these are already zero, so the output and the start relay is zero. So that's an example of a simple um, latching circuit for motor start type circuit. And again, um, in some ways, it's a little more clunky and a little harder to understand what's going on just by viewing it um, than ladder logic. Ladder logic is uh, much more visual for this type of logic because these are just blocks. And so you have to look at the name of the block to understand what's going on inside. Whereas with ladder logic, it's very visual. You can see what it's doing without much effort. So that wraps up this intro to Function Block Diagram. If you want more training to help you become a competent PLC programmer, 
then check out our PLC training membership called My PLC Training Academy. We have PLC and HMI courses um, along with support for myself and my team, a community of other electricians, technicians, and engineers who are becoming confident PLC programmers, and access to Studio 5000 software and more. Also, we're planning on releasing a course on function block diagram later in 2021 which you'll get access to as a member if you're still a member then so that's it for now thanks for watching we'll see you in the next video